Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. And today you join me with these two bargain barges, and I'm going to run through the comparison between 2008 luxury with the mid 2010s. So stay tuned for this video. So you join me inside the Volkswagen Phaeton, and today we're here with the owner Liam. Hello. <laughs> and he's going to run through some of the things on the car that he likes, and we're just going to compare kind of luxury cars over the kind of two decades um, from mid 2000s the mid 2010s. So we're starting off in mid 2008. 2008. So this is your 3 litre TDI 4 motion Phaeton. Yep. Uh, so to tell us a little bit about the car. Uh, well, got the car last year. Uh, loved every single minute of it. Uh, things I love about this car is it's basically a Bentley for cheap money. You've got basically all the dashboards and the inboard inside this car is basically all Bentley. Underneath, so be kind of basic Bentley running gear. You've got the air suspension, the uh, four motion system, which is the same as in the Continental GT and the Flying Spur. Uh, basically, this was designed by Ferdinand Pieck, who also designed the Bugatti Veyron. At the same time, this was basically his swan song. Basically, he designed this car just basically for him and his retirement. I just love all the, everything about the car, all the over engineering. Basically, everything's just. They didn't go for just that will do everything's all well let's make it the best it can be uh, everything in it you've got well they would have television but the television doesn't work anymore okay in it so what's yeah. your top gadget you use in the car well all of the well favorite thing in this car is the fact that normally the you drive along normally the air vents are covered then when you turn the air, the air con on all the vents open up and it's just basically everything's over engineered. Okay. It's like, why would you need to have the vents that open? But it does. I just love everything about it. It's just a fantastic car to drive. It's just basically it feels like you're driving a Bentley where a diva has got a big diesel engine up the front. But Which the same engine was used in the Q7 and the Q7, it's like the Audi Group by the V6 TDI. Yeah. And is that roughly horsepower wise? Is uh, that... This one's got 221 brake horsepower. Okay. Which is enough. It's for wafting down the motorway. It's enough. Motorway speeds is definitely enough. And speeding the motorway, what kind of running cost are we getting this? What MPG? And uh, MPG on the motorway, if you're doing a long run, you can get it. You can get it up to 30, 40. But right. normal day to day, what where I stay uh, up hills and things like that, and getting around about 28 to 32. Okay. But for a big three liter diesel, you're not expecting. Fantastic. And the air suspension. Air suspension. Has, I'm sure uh, yep. And from the air suspension, uh, adaptive, adaptable shock absorbers. Same as you see, you see in Bentley, goes from comfort to sport. I've always just got it in mid for a, a variation of both. You've also got the height adjustable uh, suspension as well, so it's quite good. Especially when you've got a winter roads and it's starting a bit mm. flooded. Just put, lift the car up. Only goes up a couple of inches, but it's good. And then you've got the uh, heated seats. This one's on. It's only got heated seats. The later models did have heated and cooled seats. This one's just got heated with right. six different levels right. of heating. Basically, put it on six, and your backside's cooked yeah. within a couple of minutes. And obviously, being a large car, how do you find that? Or driving around town, is it? It's your first barge, isn't it? You this is to... my first barge. This is yeah. the biggest car I've ever owned. It's just I, I enjoy driving it around town. You do get a lot of looks from people because it is quite a rare car. Yeah, and Absolutely. people who know, know it's not a Passat. When honestly. you get the car enthusiasts like yourselves, they, they know exactly what it is. And it's fantastic, just a big car. Go down the motorway, it's brilliant. And you know the story when it originally came, didn't you? Like, yeah. This original car. Yep. Uh, I've read, the, read up about it. It's obviously this was Ferdinand PX, as I said, she's swan song. Yeah. The parameters they gave the engineers for it were as quite a few of the engineers said, were impossible. One of them was the car with the larger engine that it came with originally was the same as it's in the Bentley Continental GT, the W12, just without the turbochargers. And one of the things we said was the car must be able to drive at 186 miles an hour all day long, uh, down a waterway with the bonnet staying perfectly flat and the air conditioning inside must stay at a steady 22 degrees for 24 hours yeah. solid. And I'm going to ask uh, reliability, I'm sure some people are going to be curious about that. So in your ownership, with regards to the Phaeton, because this is a depreciated bargain, I think they were yeah. 
probably 60 odd grand for the diesel back in the day. Yeah. And probably closer to maybe what, 80 or 90 for the W12 back in the day. I think that when I heard with this one, talking to people, the V6 in this spec was between, I think it was about 57 grand, brand new. Mm -hmm. And obviously I got this last year for a tenth of that. Yeah. Reliability, a few wee teasing issues which you would get with a car that's now over 10 years old. One of the main thing I had was, as you may be able to see in the video, or if you've seen videos online, is the boot lid. It's extremely over-engineered. It's all hydraulics that open the boot lid. Yeah, and it's kind of got like three arms at each side, doesn't three it? Three arms, it? Yeah. Which it lifts up. A, it's one of my favourite things in the car is yeah. the over-engineered hinges. I do want to tell the viewers how much that costs. Not you, obviously, the warranty company. No, the warranty that. company, when, because I got the car for warranty and it broke, basically. Instantly I got the car. Basically, the garage I bought it from never told me it wasn't working correctly. Uh, so, claimed that back. They needed a new battery and the boot control module had to come straight from Volks the Volkswagen Group. And all together, it was £1,500. Which is quite a chunk of change when you're looking at a car that's probably costing about well, six this, grand. This car it? was, I got this for £5,600 right. last in May 2021. And we may as well punt it while we're here. This car's actually up for sale, isn't it? The car is up for sale. Um, uh, so if I, if, it's, if I can find the link, I'll put it on Gum. If it's Gumtree, it'll probably be on. It probably it's on Auto Trader. It's as on well Gumtree, Auto Trader, and Facebook Marketplace. So I'll leave one of those links down below, uh, and you guys can have a wee swift through if you want to see the photographs, or if you actually want to buy the car, get in touch with Liam. Uh, it's on for less than he paid for it and it's only got what 70 odd thousand it's miles just 73 and a half thousand miles 73 and a half thousand miles so well it's under the 100k mark and you see one's online for with two three times that mileage yeah. which is obviously it's engineered the car is over engineered so it yeah. just keeps going and with regards to build material like i know it's got the bentley running gear but they've kind of kept it understated inside yeah you? Like the it's quite understated. of wood you've got the dark uh, kind of almost dark gray dark, uh, dark gray leather just, inside yeah, You've got plenty the, of space in the back. I said this car's just over five meters in length, so there is a lot of room in the back, uh, as you'd expect, uh, kind of a barge mm. kind of car. Um, you can get your CEOs driving around in the back of this car. Huge bonnet up front, and as we mentioned, over engineered boot uh, hinge, but we do have a nice large boot mm. there as well. I've done, I've been asked quite a few times in my ownership to do airport runs for people. <laughs> Picked my mother in law and a friend up in the airport uh, in this, brought them back down the roads, and basically dressed, dressed as a chauffeur, right. picked them all up and I think people actually thought it was a genuine chauffeur. So just before we jump into the Jaguar to see how the technology and luxury has yeah. changed over the years, uh, final thoughts on your Phaeton before we jump in? Just absolutely, what a car, as, we, as anybody knows me, like the other half and friends obviously know, I call this my, my champagne car for lemonade money. Right, so that's that, so we're going to jump in to the next car which is the Jaguar XJ. So you join us now inside the Jaguar XJ, which I believe is the X351 chassis. I'll put that in the description as well as I've done my research. So this is a Jaguar XJ portfolio, 2012, now about 42,000 miles at the time of filming. And I kind of just wanted to jump out your car mm -hmm. and into this one, just to kind of see how, not really a decade later between the exact models, but wherever that Phaeton came out, 2004. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this came out in like 2010, yeah. so it's almost like a decade in between it and just how things have changed. So, uh, as you can see we're in the XJ, what do you, what's your first impressions of it? Very, it's very smart, it's, you can, it just seems a bit younger than the Phaeton. Obviously you've got a like, different, you've got, like, obviously in the Phaeton it's a proper, it's, autom it's automatic proper lever for changing yeah. the gear, this is obviously a dial. Uh, yeah, and that's a six speed, isn't it? That's a six speed. So, this has been a pre facelift, it's also six speed. Uh, this is where you got the rotary knob that was in the Range Rover as well. I think the Jaguar XF kind of rises up. You've got the vents that rise up, Jaguar, I've got the knob that rises yeah. up. Uh, the vents in this are kind of, I wouldn't say almost turbine airplane style, the way yeah. they rotate around, circular, kind of, kind of plastic. We've got the same kind of analog clock that seems to be a luxury car thing. Yeah. If it's a Lexus, if it's a. Your Phaeton's got an analog clock, the Jaguar's got it. Neat touch. A little bit more modern, we've got the digital dash. Uh, this one, the portfolio, you do have the leather dash uh, on top of the door, Alcantara headlining. Sunroof as well, which it all down to specs, so I'm not really going to focus on too much on that, but there are some modern gadgets that you do appreciate, like if you click down here and you can get a massage, which right. I know some people enjoy that, and I've seen videos of people with the 6th and 3rd Phaeton uh, yeah. enjoying a massage, so 
I think it was quite a, I think it was quite an expensive option on was the it? VW Phaetons with, yeah. the, with the mass engine seats. I do like this. I do like it's definitely a lot more modern than the Phaeton. Like obviously you've got digital dashboard. It's not get the it's not get the fancy vents like the the Phaeton, which no. is one of the, the and was the selling was one of the selling this points. Have right? a, this doesn't have adjustable ride height either. Um, yeah. Your car's got a very comfortable suspension, even in low profile tyres. Being a portfolio wheel trim, it does have quite low profile tyres as well. Yeah. You can get a luxury trim one, which is like 19 inch wheels or with more of a sidewall. Uh, both cars conveniently are a 3 litre diesel, Volkswagen Group engine. This engine is actually part of, I think, the 2.7 that was shared with Land Rover and actually the Peugeot Group back in the late 2000s, and then they bored it out to the 3 litre and it's got a turbocharger as well. Uh, zero to 60 in this is in I think the high six second range from when I've looked. That's a 8.8 8 seconds. 8 so that's kind of maybe a wee bit of the change. Uh, yeah. Weight is a big factor with this aluminium versus I think that's mostly steel isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Uh, so this is about like, 1800 or just over 1800 kilos. That's, obviously that's got a four wheel drive system I think. Yeah. That's just, I think it's 2025 yeah. kilos. Which obviously I think probably the extra 100 kilos would be the fact it's a four wheel drive system. Yeah. Um, and with regards to length, I think there's like 100mm or just under 100mm in it. The Jaguar's actually a little bit longer. We're both in short wheelbase yeah, levels sure. today. You can get higher powered engine models and long wheelbase models if you're going to be chauffeuring people around. Yeah. Uh, this car's got a touchscreen, your car's going to got a button that looks like a touchscreen but you've got the buttons down buttons the side. Inside, yeah. um, all got climate control. You, again, you tend to expect you can get TVs in that, you can get TVs, this one's got the TV. Yeah. Um, Massaging seats, heated and cooled seats, as we mentioned. But gadget for gadget, pretty much similar. A Jaguar thing or a Ford thing is the heated windscreen. I like that. I think on a nice frosted day. Uh, well, that's got. It's not. Get, it's not like actual heated, but it has got the demist on that because the Phaeton comes with a dehumidifier. Yeah. When you turn that on, and like obviously cold Scottish winter days, especially start when I start working it's just about clock in the morning, going to that start it up and literally as soon as I put the blower on for the windscreen five seconds and it's gone yeah so yeah. it's quite good and I'm, I'm comparing them like for like as well I vaguely remember you saying about the rear windscreen in the Phaeton you don't actually see the lines do you yeah the, the, element. the, the elements are ex extremely thin yeah. you don't you don't see them at all whereas in this it's just kind of traditional with your kind of bar lights uh, bar lights your bar the heater elements yeah. in the car there are some nice uh, details in this Jaguar as well. You've got the um, kind of embossed or debossed, sorry, uh, Jaguar emblem yeah. on the headrests and piping. Pretty neat on the motorway as well. You're going to expect about 40 miles to a gallon. Even though they're both three litres, you're still not going to get probably over 50. I think 43 is probably the best I've seen. Averaging about 35, and you were averaging about 28. Was that right? 28 to 32. Yeah. The one thing with the like, I don't know about this Jag, but the Phaeton. Because it's a four wheel drive, it's because it is four wheel drive. I'm guessing this is rear wheel drive. Yeah, it's all rear wheel drive. Yeah. Uh, well, this particular model is rear wheel drive. Which is one of the selling points that I got. I wanted a big barge. Was that's four wheel drive? Because like, where I stay is obviously up hills, and it's on frosty mornings or snowy days that it just keeps going. Yeah. Actually, taking neighbours to, I said about taking neighbours to work in that because they work up the hills and couldn't get her, couldn't get her car up the hill. Yeah. So I said with bad weather, I would take her in that because it does pull up the hills even in the snow or ice. It's a cracking big yeah. car. Definitely, this is nice as well. I said there. That's the main purpose of this video was to compare and contrast both bargain barges. I think the portfolio Jaguars started about seventy-two grand when they came out, and largely towards the end of their line it was about eighty-four. Uh, for the diesel ones, obviously over 100 grand for the petrol models, and now you can pick these up for less than £20,000. You can get some ropey ones around 10 grand, but the same as the Phaeton, you'd probably not risk by a super high mileage ropey example just because you could probably put the same value again yeah. into maintaining the car. Uh, as I said, you want to try and pick up one as low miles as possible within your budget uh, and probably spec. You don't always need all the super gadgets, do you? You don't always need no. massaging seats, it's just a nice to have. And that's just kind of wanted to get at is just to compare and contrast yeah. uh, two very different ways of coming at luxury. One's got almost Bentley running gear, Audi running gear, is, or engine transmission, I think it's Audi, the rest of it's pretty much Bentley. Yeah. Uh, for the price of a very depreciated Volkswagen, which probably can probably get a Golf these days with the way the market is. Yeah. An 08 Golf, I could imagine, probably costs about three and a half, four grand, and you could get the flagship from back in the day. So I was looking at that, or 
as you say, obviously the popular same engine, it's in this 2.73 litre Jaguar unit was, I was looking at the Citroen C6, C6 which is yeah. another rear car. Yeah, which is probably a quarter kettle of reliability as well, as but well. it's got the cool concave rear window, window, which is another barge, which maybe we'll get the channel one day, but uh, I think I'm these two are... I'm not buying that. <laughs> these two are risky enough from Volkswagen and Jaguar, quite mainstream brands. Uh, but yeah, but overall, I said, we've only had this Jaguar about three weeks now, you've had that about nine months, ten months. Oh, tw uh, nearly, tw nearly a year now. Nearly a year. Uh, so you've got a bit more ownership experience with your barge, with regards to this barge, <laughs> we're just getting settled in with it. And just kind of wanted to show you guys what they like. So my main thing is I like the glove box, touch the button, not everybody would know it's there. The rising gear selector is nice, it's not the easiest to get from reverse to drive quickly. If you're doing a three-point turn you have to foot the brake and wait, but you get used to it. Um, sound system's good, and that's probably the main thing, as I said, getting used to the size, it's the first car I've really driven regularly but it is over five meters in length and yeah that's pretty much that and I picked I, said, I picked that up in near London, drove it all the way back out up here and just up, up, just wafted all the way up the road which was one of the things I liked about it. It's just going to work, coming back from work, taking it anywhere, just wafts down the motorway quite happily. Yeah. I think it was one of the things about that it was it was it just ate up the miles on the autobahns and Germany. Yeah. yeah so okay. if you had to round up this video, what's your one thought of this car to leave the viewers with? The Jaguar. It's, it's a nice big car. I like. I love the wood. I like how the, the whole cockpit wraps around you. Yeah. That has a neat touch. If hopefully you can pick it up on camera, you'll see the got Jaguar right in the front. So you always yeah. kind of reminded the way Mercedes just had the point to start at the front. You've no leaping leper at the front um, mm. of this car, so it just reminds you of driving a Jaguar. I do like that myself. Yeah. But yeah, I just want to say thank you very much guys for watching this video and comparing the Phaeton to the XJ. Both are great luxury barges. I said you can pick up Liam's Phaeton for under six grand if you're looking to buy it. Um, this car that we just picked up and it's under 20 grand, so depending on your budget, there's a barge out there for you. Uh, hopefully we'll give you some more maintenance videos as this car <laughs> ownership progresses. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Comment below what would you pick up. If you like the Phaeton or the XJ, are you going to be more left field and going for something like the Citroen C6? I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, stay safe. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Cars of Glasgow. And Liam, you put in, you've picked up a new Abarth. Yep. Uh, so your Instagram handle for that is? It is Gecko Abarth. Gecko Abarth. So and the Phaeton's got bar well, Baroness, uh, Baroness Phaeton. Baroness Phaeton for... The face on if you want to follow them on Instagram. Uh, nothing for the XJ at the moment, we'll just be the regular cars at Glasgow, but make sure you check us out on socials as well. Ciao.